Hello friends, I'm Pastor Brent Juliet, and this is Living Hope Church in Menominee, Wisconsin. I'd like to share with you today about a true event that recently brought me great joy, but as it turns out, very temporary joy. You see, I still have an open account at a bank in the city where I used to live. We moved to a new house fairly recently, but I had not changed the address on the account. So I checked online last week, hoping I could make the address change there, keep it simple. And as I was checking, I was surprised to discover that the savings account, which had a balance of roughly $100, had somehow ballooned to $4,100. So this was a blessing from out of the blue, wasn't it? But where did it come from? Who was it from? It wasn't Government Cares Act money. The amount was wrong, and it wasn't from a former employer. No, it was actually a gift to me, and I discovered it was from an older couple named Ellen and Ron. Because I looked into the account on the bank website and discovered uh, there a, a copy of their deposit slip with their names and their address. And I've never met Ellen and Ron. Don't know who they are. Don't know why they'd be so generous toward me. But given their generosity, the right thing to do, obviously, would be for me to send them a letter of appreciation. And, and probably as, as I'm doing that, I should ask them, why the gift and, and why me? Now, in this case, I was pretty certain that there was a mistake, that this wonderful couple had not really intended to bless a perfect stranger with $4,000. So instead of contacting Ellen and Ron directly, I called the bank and I said, I think I have $4,000 in my account that isn't mine. And unfortunately, the people at the bank agreed with me, and the money disappeared just like that. And Ron and Ellen, I suppose, were probably very happy, or, or maybe, maybe they never knew and will never know that their money was temporarily my money. But all this got me wondering. What if a very large gift suddenly appeared in my account? And, and what if it was supposed to be there? How would I respond to that kind person? Well, the truth is that a precious gift, one beyond valuation, has been given. Listen to this. Ephesians 1.7 In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. And Romans 5.8 tells us something of the why. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And a couple of verses later, the Apostle Paul uh, puts it this way, that Christ died while we were still enemies. Not just perfect strangers, but enemies of his. This is true for you. The riches of God's grace have been lavished upon you. It is not a mistake. God has very intentionally deposited the priceless treasure of the righteousness of Christ to your account, while that awful and endless debt of your sin has been placed on him. If you believe this, then it is for you. But if you do not believe it, you will not receive it. For you who grasp this joyous truth and believe the gift of God in Jesus is really yours and for you, will you respond in the obvious ways? Well, what are those obvious ways? One, make contact with your benefactor, and we do it by prayer. Two, tell him thank you from the bottom of your heart. And three, you could ask him why. Why such kindness? And why you? I think you'll find his answer is because he loves you, because he loves you, the former stranger, the former enemy. And now he, who has invested so much in you, 
He now has great plans for you. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the precious gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that you have given to us, the grace you've lavished upon us through Christ. We pray, Lord, that you will allow us to walk in the joy of this gift today. Amen.